The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 1st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, were going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 is the number you call in on. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we've got your back. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it off early. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then will then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A mixed bag is what we're starting with. You got the Dow up just slightly, 11 points, S&P 14, NASDAQ 162. Russell's off eight. Semis are down 28. Trainers are off 125. Gold's up five. Silver's off two pennies. Light recruit is up 27 cents. Natural gas is down two pennies. You got a mixed bag out there. And the 30-year treasury up two points and six ticks. Trading out at 124.17. Now, our leaders in the clubhouse out there roaring its engine. It's Ferrari. RACE is a ticker symbol up 34 bucks, nine, nearly 10%. Super Micro powering that Ferrari up 27 bucks, 5%. Parker Hannafin up 20 bucks, 4%. Simpris up $18, 25%. Lancaster Colony up uh, about 9%. That's a $17 move. We've got some movers, but we've also got some shakers. Those shakers, Markle group down 10 percent 149 bucks that's a stinger you've got old dominion off 11 bucks illinois tool down 11 bucks meritage homes down 10 msci off about 10 bucks ch robinson down 10 bucks as well so we got plenty to look at of course i want to look at what you want to look at so let's begin by taking a look at the equity future contracts. What do we have out here? All, all of them have tops, that's for sure. You've got a Rhodes Mentum Indicator top that formed yesterday with that uh, bearish reversal candle. We've got a Three River Evening Star candle formation. Prices below, close below yesterday, the bottom of its daily profile. 48.84 is a key level to be watching. You know, you can't just have one break below support to confirm a change in trend, but you get two. Well, then we've got it. So watch that 48.84. What happens if price closes above it? Well, if it closes back inside that profile, it could be signaling that yesterday's move was a false breakdown. It's just the way the, the uh, cards roll out here. Now, if we take a look at the NQ, formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top several days ago. That was last week. Yesterday, price reconfirmed that top with a bearish reversal candle and closed below the bottom of its daily profile. Again, a close below 17,352 will give you a profile change in trend signal. Now, if that happens, in the case of the ES Mini, 2070, 4702, I believe, is the target, is a target to the downside, and another target inside the NQ to the downside be 16,334. The Dow Equity Future contract also forming a Rhodes Mintum indicator top yesterday. That uh, uh, suggests, now, in the, in the case of the Dow, way different chart patterns than the ES and the NQ. And this is where this mixed bag may continue to come in. And the Dow's charts are really still telling you and I that the global flow of capital is still alive and well here in the Dow. Global flow of capital. 
What they want is large cap stocks. That's why they really focus on the Dow. So back to yesterday's signal. We got a Roach Mentum indicator top. Price is below the oscillator and change line. You don't see that here, but I can see that on another screen. And, but price is above the top of its daily profile. So the overall signal in the Dow is neutral. If you're going to be short, don't be short the Dow. And today's activity is really expressing that to us. And anyway, so I'll just leave it at that. In the case of the uh, Russell 2000, that formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top weeks ago. Uh, price closed below the bottom of its daily profile yesterday. It's trading below yesterday's low right now. That's pretty bearish, and that suggests moving back towards the 1904.80 level. If we get a close below that, that will trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts. Now, let's go from here and go over to the intraday charts and see what kind of signals we can get up, get uh, so that we can give you the play-by-play -play out there. We've got a number of traders inside the den that are intraday traders out there, and so these charts can assist them with what is taking place. So let's begin with first the the uh, there, there's two bottoms that are uh, that are that are clear on our screen. There's really a couple bottoms that are clear on our screen right now. But let's focus on the 240-minute chart first. So on the 240-minute chart. What we can see out here is yesterday, this confirmed a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count confirmation came at uh, uh, 10 p.m. last evening out there. And then we saw price get back inside its profile. So it was new profile formed out here at 6 this morning. Price is still inside there. This is a bullish structured profile. So the first level to be watching, so what price has done, well, we've been on, I said we were coming on the air. Price has pulled back and has tested that support level. That's a real key support level, real key because it is bullish in structure. So if price closes below that on a four hour basis, by the way, this candle doesn't complete till 2 p.m. I know that's a little bit large with regard to waiting for the real intraday traders out there. But what you do want to know is also the patterns that are going on up above the intraday charts that you trade. And so what's really key here is watching 14, I'm sorry, 17 to 74. If price closes below that, that would suggest that we're headed lower. But because we have this TD9 count bottom, the second and even more important level to be watching is that overnight low. And that overnight low came in at 17,221.50. So that is a very key number to write down on your pad of paper. I was uh, able to just log in just before Basil was closing out his show. He said, hey, if we close below yesterday's lows, um, that's a bad scene out there. I, what I would add to it, if you take a look at the futures market, it's not really yesterday's lows. We came to the close. It's going to be the low that came in by 10 o'clock last night. And again, that's down at the 17 to 2150. You close below that, we are headed lower out there. That's the NQ for its four-hour time frame chart. If we take a look at anything else that's out here, let's go to now the 15-minute chart. The 15-minute time frame chart, let me open this up here so we're all looking at the same thing. This formed a TD9 count bottom. It did it earlier this morning at about 3 o'clock. It was actually at, uh, well, it confirmed it by 2.30 this morning. Led to a nice rally. Looked like maybe we're going to head up towards that 17 to uh, 426 level, but that's not the case. Now, what price is doing right now, it's testing that TD9 count bottom. What there is here also is there is TD9 count breakout support at 17,248. So if you're an intraday trader, that would be the level that you would want to see price close below to suggest lower price, even knowing that you've got support at, again, that overnight low last night, that 17,221 area. But what we should know is price is pulling back and it's testing a prior bottom. That wasn't just a bottom from a swing point standpoint, it was a TD9 count bottom. So you could also get a rally out of here. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back from this break. Um, let's do this. Let's shift. We've got about four, five, six questions that have come in. Let's get to those. I don't want to fall too far behind on those. Of course, would love more requests out there. And then we can always come back to the equity future contracts. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go try to answer that question for LB. He's looking for an entry point inside of natural gas, as many of us are. Now, this is a seasonal chart. I was able to get the folks over at Season Next to go ahead and uh, correct the uh, natural gas charts out there. So now we've got 33 years worth of uh, data out here, and that's what we're looking at, 33, 30, 33 years worth of data. Now, what we can see here, LB, is that, uh, uh, first of all, November, December are just horrible months with regard to how, on average, natural gas trades. In January and February are just slightly better, but they're still horrible months. What this shows is, seasonally speaking, over the course of the last 33 years, natural gas would find its bottom right around the middle of February. We just entered February, so we should be on the lookout for a bottom. It's either the middle of February to about the end of uh, February, so sometime in that time period. By the way, that red vertical line, that is where we are at today. Today. And this shows that we're still in a cycle now where we are likely to see some lower lows out there. So that's that's the first thing. And then what we have out here, you can see we then have a two month seasonal cycle. Very uh, it, it's the best seasonal cycle for natural gas. And that would take us up into a top right right around the middle of June out there. So we're looking at middle of February to middle of June as being the favorable seasonal cycle for natural gas. Now that we have that out of the way, let's take a look at on the, the daily time frame chart. I'll just open it up. It's just an absolute mess out there. With that, I could draw in an A to B equals CD pattern, but I'd be starting all the way up here at three dollars and sixty cents at least, all the way down to two bucks. I, I, we might take natural gas down to about zero, so we're not going to do that. And at this stage here, all that the daily chart is really helpful, at least to me, LB, is just understanding where we're trading in relationship to profiles as well as the oscillator and change line. And we're below both of those right now. That suggests lower price. We don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here on the daily time frame. So that says it's going to take some time. So that would actually fit into this equation here that maybe we get a daily bottom sometime in the middle of February out there. However, 
Whether we get that or not on the daily time frame, that's not where Stevie is focused. And the reason is because when I take a look at this, and we're looking at about a two-month rally, perhaps a two-month rally, but uh, no more than that, a four-month rally, February into uh, June out here. Instead, what I'm looking for is an intermediate-term time frame signal. And that's the beauty of this weekly chart, and that's also the beauty of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. What we need now, LB, and we're not going to be trying to catch the bottom tick, or at least I am not going to be trying to catch the bottom tick. Not that I wouldn't like to do that. It's just not worth it. Here, what we need to see is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom, much like we had yesterday, confirmations of tops really all over the place with regard to bearish reversal candles with a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. Now, this pattern, when it forms, it can really act like a slingshot, so to speak. And we're going to, in fact, there was a question that came in yesterday after the show from a Gino, and he was asking me about the RMI patterns, how well does it identify bottoms? That was a specific question. So um, I've got some charts. We'll go take a look at that and answer that question. But here on the weekly, and, and from there, you'll be able to kind of get a feel for that slingshot type move that this pattern uh, oftentimes uh, creates out there. So if we get a bullish reversal candle inside of natural gas for its weekly time frame, then we may be off to the races. The monthly time frame chart is basically horrible out here. Prices below all kinds of support levels. There's no bottom signal. Um, there's not even an A to B equals CD pattern that I could legitimately write in down here. So we'd have to be taking a look at an expansion of swing points. If I take an expansion of the swing points from about two bucks up to six dollars, that's going to get us down to zero as well. So there's really not a great technical tool that I have to try to identify where is it that natural gas is headed to. The last piece of this, I'll try to put natural gas into one of my horizontal trading range spreadsheet, uh, not spreadsheets, but uh, charts out there. I'm not going to do that now. It's, uh, it takes a little bit too much time to get all of that set up. So we can take a look at that. But I really believe that LB, what you're waiting for here is waiting for a bullish reversal candle. Let's get a good intermediate term signal out there and then let's all fire away and have a natural gas party out there. So I hope that helps you with regard to natural gas, thanks for waiting an, an extra day to get that answered. Uh, also, Marvin wrote in yesterday, and Marvin wants to take a look at Aspen. ASPN is the uh, ticker symbol, and Marvin, thank you as well for waiting an extra day out here. And what Marvin's looking for is a, he wants to start a long position. So the beauty about this chart here, what we know, is that yesterday, price closed below its breakout level. It broke out from $11.45. That was based upon the TD9 count pattern. Price closed below that level. That was a key area of support. Today is going to become bar number seven of a TD9 count. What this suggests, Marvin, is that between tomorrow and Tuesday of next week, so let's come back to it. How about let's make that a date on Monday, but you've got to remind me. I won't remember. Uh, and let's come back and take a look at how Aspen is trading then, because maybe this will form a TD9 count bottom out here. And what I don't know is whether or not this retracement, I mean, that's between the low from uh, January the 19th all the way up to the high on January 23rd. It does look like a 0.382 retracement. If it were or close to it, then we could say, well, then there might be an A to B equal CD pattern of the downside. But right now, let's go with the fact that this is likely well, I don't know if it's likely or not. We won't really won't know till tomorrow and or Monday, but this may go on to form a TD9 count bottom. And if it can do that, as price is pulling back to the 1050, let's say the 964 to 1050 level, then on the weekly time frame chart, by the way, you've got a TD9 count top on the weekly chart out there. If it can pull back into that area, that's the buy zone. So if we get a nice bottom on the daily time frame with price into the buy zone on the weekly time frame and with price still above 999, that's the monthly oscillator and change line. Then I think you've got the signals to at least fire away. So um, be patient. Watch how this uh, chart pattern unfolds the next couple of days. Let's come back and take a look at it on Monday, if you will. I mentioned that Gino wrote in and he was asking about that Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. But you know what you should really do is you should subscribe to Mastering Probability, and I'll teach you I'll teach you exactly how this pattern works so that you can identify it and you can create it on your own system. But in the meantime, since we're taking a look at the S&P 500 out here, or I, well, I, at least these charts will look at the S&P 500, let me just open up the weekly time frame chart. I mentioned intermediate term time frame. We were looking at the uh, natural gas contract here. So let's take a look at its roads momentum indicator bottom signals. Now, by the way, this pattern, 
just like most other patterns, in fact, every other pattern that I've ever found, does a better job of identifying bottoms than it does identifying tops. It is a good one for identifying tops, but the bottom signal is even better. And really, that's what you had asked about, Gino. So here, if we take a look at the, the pattern, I'm not going to go through the details of that pattern and how it's calculated. You get that uh, as a Mastering Probability subscriber out there. But here we can see you had a nice Rhodesman indicator bottom on a weekly basis. That was October the 14th. And that's been a nice little slingshot to the upside. Now, you might say, why is that a slingshot to the upside out there? I'd at least ask that question. The only thing that I can come back with because I do like uh, spending time in the uh, pool out the, out here, is if you've got one of those pool balls, you know, and you put it at the bottom of your feet and you try pushing it down, at some point in time you're going to lose your balance. And what's going to happen? That ball's going to just spring up and get the Sam Heck out of uh, – out of uh, out of that pool water out here it's a similar concept really uh so visually that's how i take a look at this is creating that slingshot to the upside but that's a, that's only one example at a bottom on a weekly base let's pull this chart back further they don't happen that often on the weekly time frame here's another one this one forms nice bullish engulfing candle back on october 7th in 2011 how good of a bottom was that call out there uh, but we come back here. This is, uh, we get a nice bullish engulfing candle the week of March 13th. Uh, that's in 2009. That called and identified the uh, bottom out there. Let's come take a look in 2000. And, this is 2002, I think. So, yeah. So, back in October of 2002, nice bullish engulfing, confirming that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Just because you see lines drawn does not mean that that is a confirmed pattern. That just tells us about a pattern that is in place. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to our first call. Let's go to Boston and speak with Steve. Steve, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Hey, Steve, how are you? Are you uh, taking care of business? I am trying to. I want to take care of your business. I want to take care of your business. Hello, Randy Bachman. There you go. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Now, I, I, you, you're really? calling about SPXU. So are you in a position? You're looking to get into the position? I'm not, but I, early on, uh, I think he said, yes, the low point would be 4702. Let me make sure. Let me give you that number. Uh, I was uh, just wondering. I think that... Correlate 40, to that short. No, uh, 48's not for the ES would be 4866 is the number that you're looking for. 4866, even Steven. If you get it close below that, that's going to really suggest that we had to lower price. And where that comes from is that's coming from the ES mini. I'm looking at the uh, four hour chart for it. We were looking at the NQ's four hour chart. That's got a nice TD9 count bottom. And if we close below there, that would suggest that what price would do is target the 4763.50 level. That's where price on the four hour time frame actually broke out from. Uh, on the okay. four hour time, on the four hour time frame chart, uh, which is what we're looking at right now. We can see that price has rallied right up into resistance. This is a new profile that formed at 6 this morning. And, Steve-O, when this profile was forming, it formed above price. That tells us about overhead supply, and that is a – typically, that is a bearish message. And what price was able to do both at the 10 o'clock uh, time frame – this is a four-hour chart – and the time frame that we're in right now, this bar will complete at 2 p.m., Prices run up into that resistance level. That's 48.94. We'll call it 48.95. So that's a that's a number right. to the upside that I'd like you to watch. You've got a number to the downside to watch. You also have a number to the upside. Yeah. The price is able to close above that. We should see a rally into the 49.08 or 49.16 level, and that's where I would then suggest that uh, you could uh, take a look at getting into that SPXU or whatever uh, whatever uh, product that you want to uh, use out there. Um, yeah, that's. That's the ultra short uh, S and P five hundred. Yes, here. yes. I and I can pull those. That, if, if the numbers you just stated come to fruition, obviously this goes down the SPXU, and vice versa. Yes, yes. The other area yeah, to be okay. watching. You know, so I gave you, I gave you another, I gave you a number to the upside on the two hundred because that was also based on the four-hour time frame chart. The other number to be paying attention to today is the bottom of that daily profile, and that is at uh, forty-eight eighty-four. So if price closes above forty-eight eighty-four today on the ES mini, what that would then do is it would get price back inside its daily profile, and so then that creates more of a muddy situation for us because it could say or it would say that yesterday's close below profile support was a false breakdown. Uh, but let's just take one thing at a time. We can come back to that. I would say it yeah. would uh, be a false breakdown if, in fact, the spot volatilex also closed below its 50-day exponential moving average. So that is one thing that you also have going for you or anybody who's looking at the S&P 500, whether, wondering whether they should be long or short. I would not, I'm not really referring to intermediate-term traders, more so you know, day-ish type traders, swing-type traders. And so if we just take a look at this chart, too, this is the, this is the uh, spot volatility index, and you can see right now the 50-day exponential moving average is 1364. If price if would have closed below 1364, that the ES mini is certainly going to get back inside his profile, and then I'd have to almost call any shorts off, so to speak. So the ideal situation is price rallies up towards that 4908, 4916 level. The spot volatilix still above the 50-day exponential moving average at 1364, and then I'd say go ahead and fire away. At least that gives you the best reward risk right. type opportunity, I, in, in my opinion. Does gotcha. that make sense? Okay, does great. That make, hey, that's is, awesome. Okay. Thank you uh, very your, much. You're welcome. Appreciate what's your dog's what's your dog's name now that we heard the bark? Uh that's Louie. The crazy Louis. chihuahua. Oh, that's great. Well tell <laughs> well we'll give Louie a treat for us, would you? No, uh, he's eating one right now. Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> All right, Steve O, thanks for the call. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Now. You bet. Uh, let's go to our, our next question, folks. This one comes in from Nicholas, and Nicholas wants to take a look at Amazon. So let me try to find where I stuck that Amazon chart. Could be here. It is. Great. 
So Nicholas's question specifically is, will price close above yesterday's high? So a good question. He's, he saw that this morning in early trading that price was traded above. And the real question was, will it hold that level? So when we take a look at the daily time frame charts for Amazon, here is what we know. We know that its oscillator and change line is a resistance point, Nicholas, and that is currently printed at 158.46. That is just slightly below yesterday's high out there. Only a close above that, 158.46, would then suggest not only will price go take on yesterday's high, but in the case of Amazon, it'll get back to the high from a couple of days ago. It's all-time high out there. Now, the all-time high has volume. And that swing point of 45 million shares. Amazon today has traded 20 million shares in the first two hours of trading. That sets up approximately a 60 million share a day, 60 million shares. So price is moving higher with volume inside of Amazon. Is it moving higher or lower? Well, because we haven't taken out yesterday's low, I have to say it's moving higher with volume. But nonetheless, Nicholas, you still have that resistance point at 158.45. That's what price has to take out in order to suggest that it wants to continue to move higher. Now, if we look at the weekly chart for Amazon, this is where an intermediate term trader who's holding Amazon uh, shares saw that move to the downside, maybe wanted to get got spooked out. I'd say, why would you get spooked out? All price did was just simply pull back and test that green oscillator and change line. Again, a green oscillator and change line tells us one thing. Well, maybe a couple of things. One, it tells us that the price oscillator is above zero. What's a price oscillator? That's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. You can calculate that. But it also tells us that we have a rising price oscillator above zero. And for that, you need to subscribe to Mastering Probability. I'll show you exactly how the oscillator and change line is calculated. You can actually calculate that yourself. And so when we have a rising price oscillator above zero, those are bullish conditions. Price is also in the weekly time frame chart above the top of its weekly profile, 149.26 out there. And we take a look at the uh, monthly chart. Monthly chart still has its TD9 count top. It would have been negated yesterday had Amazon closed above the high from December, which was at 155.63. It didn't. But it's trading above it right now, but this is early in the month out there. So when I take a look at these charts out here with regard to Amazon, to answer your specific question, will price get up there? It has a chance. Why has it got a chance? Why didn't you just say that right up front, Steve-O? I don't know, because I didn't see it, actually. What do we have here? When we look at that 30-minute time frame chart, we've got that We've got that uh, slingshot pattern out there. That's that Roach Mintum indicator bottom. Now, it's a 30-minute time frame chart. And they also didn't change on this wrong. Let me just simply do this here. Let me put the proper tem template up, which is the 30-minute time frame. I should say all 30 somewhere. There we go. And now we've got the correct. So what we've got out here in a 30-minute time frame, Nicholas, is price is right now trading with inside its profile. You'd like to see two consecutive closes above 157.40. That actually could set up an A to B equal C D to the upside out there. Likewise, if you see close, get the if you see close, if you see price get below this morning's low out there, this thing's headed lower. Not that you need me to tell you that, but it would negate the bottom patterns out there. The 30 minute bottom pattern that is. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Nicholas. Thanks so much for writing in. We get back to this break. Let's look at the uh, KRE, the XLF and PLNT. I think that's what we're looking at. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. Uh, thanks, Mr. Bill, for uh, letting me know that I wasn't showing the uh, charts for Amazon. I'll put them up on my chart here real quickly on the screen. You can see there's an A to B equals CD to the upside uh, inside of Amazon. Takes up towards 175 level out there. But with regard to today's activity, yesterday's activity, we can see that price is below that green oscillator change line. It's above its profile levels. Uh, so there's no bearish signal out here. There's no topping pattern that we have in place uh, and we took a look at that 30 minute chart or I was looking at that here that's got that nice road momentum indicator uh, pattern out there so it's possible that that low that came in at 1130 is just setting up a small A to B equals CD to the upside that's as long as price stays above that 156.81 area and then we take a look at that weekly time frame chart you can see how price pulled back tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line so it's still uh, bullish and here's the TD9 count on the uh, monthly time frame chart and yesterday's, yesterday's close still keeps that pattern in play out there. So sorry that I didn't have those charts up on the screen. Occasionally I do that and uh, not intentional, that's for sure. So let's come back and take a look at the um, KRE. Uh, this is for ELO inside the uh, Tiger's Den. We take a look at uh, KRE, it's getting crushed out there. In fact, it's confirming an A to B equals C to the downside. That swing point, today's swing point, already done volume of 33 million shares. The B point of this would be the swing point here from January the 17th. The volume on that was 14 million shares. So you got a nice A to B equals CD to the downside. As far as price projection levels out there, let me see if I can give you one of those out here. Give me a second. I'm just doing this off the screen. I'm not going to change screens because I'll probably screw that up again. I don't want to do that. So the one to one, it's already hit. That's what it hit today. And that's at 47.15. The next price projection level would be 45.50, the one to 1 1.272. So what you're looking for here is some type of bullish reversal candle. That's not going to happen today or not likely to happen today. But if you did get one of those, you would have a Gartley buy pattern out there. Another price level to be watching really like a hawk is at 44, 46. That's where price had broken out from, and that may be where price is headed back to. The weekly time frame chart shows that price is now trading below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. That's the first time below that. That would give us a, a signal of a move to 38.83. So we've got 44, 46. We've got 45.50. We've also got 38.83. Right now in the monthly time frame chart, in order for this to get bearish ELO, price has to close below the top of that profile. So far, that has held the support. It being 
4684. So with regard to the KRE, it looks to me like it still wants to head lower. I'd be watching over the coming days, see if you get some type of bullish reversal candle. If you do, that would at least be some kind of intermediate or some type of short-term bottom, and that would take you up towards support or resistance, I should say, and resistance right now would be in the 5072 area out there. Let's go to our next caller. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, doing very well. <clears throat> I uh, I apologize for calling two days in a row. Why? We um, love your calls. We love your calls. <laughs> we we, we want to make it a trifecta. <laughs> yeah, there, I would like you to address for me, and more importantly, perhaps your listeners, just on COMEX Gold Futures and what this action, what this rally today means uh, from your perspective. Just parenthetically, uh, last week I was working with people in the den, and I made the speculation at that time that the gold price would likely be restrained from rising in through the options expiration that occurred last Thursday at 1.30 in the afternoon. I further speculated once that had passed, I saw the uh, I saw cause for a good rally to occur. Well, we're getting something right now. I'm not sure today in the past four hours why buyers have taken charge to the extent that they have. Uh, so I've got nothing to add to that, but it is moving in the direction I speculate uh, would and will occur. Having said all that, therefore, could you just address what you see, what this rally means as far as you're concerned? Sure, absolutely. And John, uh, as always, thanks for the question, and please uh, get, get, call in as often as you'd like. We'd love that. So, thanks so much, Steve. You bet, you bet. Take care. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to start off with the weekly chart. I'll, I'll just share with each of you, and we'll go take a look at the daily time frame chart. What I'll share with you is that right now, price is trading above resistance. I do not know whether it will close above resistance at day's end. Resistance being the top of its daily profile. So the number to have on your pad of paper, folks, is 2076.90. If price closes above that today, that gives us a bullish profile change in trend signal. Of course, we need two consecutive signals to confirm that. But getting one, you know, is better than getting none out there. So again, watch 2076.90. Now, let's assume we close above 2076.90 because I think maybe this is a question that John was asking: is where is price likely to run into resistance? Well, the cool thing is, is that the weekly time frame chart really shows that very clearly. And that's that there's significant resistance at 21.1340. That is a TD9 count breakdown level. That price was um, was uh, tested and rejected with a gigantic wide ranging bar on December the 1st. You can see how price traded right up into that. Ordinarily, we'd say, hey, Prices don't usually end or moves don't end on wide ranging bars. And to a certain extent, we were right about that because the very next trading session, we had price make its way up to that high in the 20, what, 2171 level. But by the end of the week, price pulled all the way back towards that green oscillator and change line. It never was able to close above that 211340 level. So, John, I would say odds favor a close above the top of the daily profile at 2076.90 just suggests that gold will go test another tested area of resistance, and that would be at the 21.13.40 level. Now, why has, the, why has gold rallied a bit out there? I would come back and say most likely because the U.S. dollar index has moved lower out here. So if we change our screens, we'll go take a quick peek at the U.S. dollar index. I'm going to hopefully remember to change back to the other screens out there. But here, if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, what we can see, and we're just going to simply expand it out, we can see that it's well off of its highs. Its highs came in at the 103.65 level. And now we're trading out at 103 even Steven. It's pulled back quite a bit. So you've seen gold rally. We've seen the US dollar index pull back. We know about the directional correlation that exists between those two. I would argue that it's not really an argument. I would just put forth that that is a likely idea. Now let's go change back to my white background screens and just simply go take a look at the currency pairs out there. So if you give me a moment, we'll get back to those screens. We're gonna switch panels out here and we'll take a look at the Euro, the Yen and the Pound. Those are the three currencies that make up uh, 70 some odd percent of the US dollar index out here. So when we take a look at the euro, I just have to get to current date out there. It actually represents 83.1%. Uh, 
So when we take a look at the euro, John, you'll appreciate this, uh, courtesy of Basil Chapman, but mostly Saratoga Bob, who used to be inside the den. You'll see that we are now in wave number seven. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but we have achieved that wave number seven. That requires a higher low to confirm. So if we get a higher low in the euro tomorrow, we'll effectually have a bottom. Yes, there's an A to B equal C to the downside. Gives us a price projection of 1.0737. But wave number seven is also a bottom pattern. That would then suggest, and you can see how that oscillator and chains on a daily basis has been real resistance, just to rally up to that, 1.087. If price doesn't take that out, guess what's going to happen to the euro? It's going to head lower. What will happen to the dollar? It will head higher out there. And we really likely won't have an overall breakout. So I hope that answered your question. And uh, please call in tomorrow. We want a trifecta. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. Welcome back. Uh, Dan, the man Levitan from New York City asked the question, was yesterday a TD9 count top inside of uh, the XLF? The answer it is. Today is the completion of that pattern. Yesterday was also Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Now here, price is above the top of that daily profile, 37.89. So even though it's got a top, its overall signal is neutral. It has lost its momentum with price being underneath that green oscillator and change line. Downside price target, at least the first one, would be 37.89 out there. Weekly chart looks very bullish. Monthly chart looks bullish 
as well. Next question comes in from Dude inside the Tiger's Den. Wants to take a look at PLNT. As we take a look at PLNT, today is going to be bar number nine of a TD nine count pattern out there. That says today or tomorrow could or should be a bottom. You should see PLNT rally up towards 71.45. That is the bottom of its daily profile. If we take a look at an intraday chart or a couple intraday charts, look for a bottom. I don't see one on the 15 minute. Do I see one on the 30 minute? I see a road's momentum indicator bottom that formed right here at 11.30 this morning. So now what you're looking for, to confirm that the daily, in fact, bottom is likely in on that TD9 count, you would like to see a close above 68.83. But you do have the signals that PLNT has formed a bottom. Hope that that helps you out, dude. The next question coming in from Hector and Patty. They want to specifically ask about the GDX and the weekly time frame. We're going to switch over to our black background screen so we can answer that. Hector and Patty. So you're talking about A to B equals CD patterns. First, we take a look at the large one out here. The large one starts at August 3rd of 2020. That's your A point. Your B point is down here. On September 27, 2021, you get a 75% retracement up into that high on April the 18th. The one-to-one, -one, it made more than a one-to-one. -one. This confirmed a buy the D point pattern the week of September that began September 26. A nice bullish reversal candle. That, in fact, led to a rally. Now, there's a smaller weekly A to B equals CD pattern that was confirmed. You were asking about the Three River Morning Star pattern. We'll put that in right now. There's your A point, your B point, and your C point. And this is the Three River Morning Star. The Candle sessions from the week of September 25th all the way through October 9th. Today's candle, or this week's least session out here, that would not be a Three River Morning Star. But you've got two confirmed A to B equals CD patterns. Right now, GDX is consolidating with inside that weekly profile, 2784 to 3236. Everybody, have a fantastic Thursday, and I'll see you on Fabulous Friday. Take care. Be safe out there.